Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here and welcome back to the first Dope Tech episode in a little while, but I'm glad it's back. So the last one was actually on this crazy high-end, ridiculous piece of video gear, the camera robots. This one is also returning to another insane, really high-end piece of video gear. This, this is the Venus Optics Laowa Macro Pro Blends. And as you can tell, it's super worthy of the name. So <laughs> I've actually had this lens for a couple weeks now, started messing with it. It's definitely not the type of lens that you use very often. It's super specialty, but it's already responsible for one absolutely crazy shot in the last video, the OnePlus 7 Pro review. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. I'll go ahead and drop a link below that like button. Okay, hold up, let's, let's rewind for a second. So the company Venus Optics makes a bunch of other weird specialty lenses like this one, this super ultra wide tilt shift macro lens that I've used for a couple of videos, especially car ones. But why did this one specifically I mean, it probably would catch your eye too, but why, why this one? Why the probe? Well, you might be like me, and you might have seen a couple clips of this lens floating around the internet. There's even one really well done viral video of someone literally shooting this lens through various subjects and getting all these crazy shots. And then most recently, it appeared in this behind the scenes video on Twitter from Phil Esposito of The Verge as the critical tool for getting that crazy intro shot from their Galaxy Fold review. Once I saw that, that sort of piqued my curiosity. I looked it up, turns out it was on B&H with like expedited shipping. Um, and that was sort of all I needed to see. So within a couple days, it was here at the studio. So what's the deal? If you're a video shooter or a creator or a YouTuber or anything, why on earth would you want a crazy lens like this? Uh, if you think about it, this is a lens that's made specifically for video and it's kind of all in the name, the probe lens. And there are a lot of crazy things about this lens. So this is what a normal camera lens looks like. You've probably seen one before. This is what a cine lens looks like, made specifically for video. And this is the probe lens. It looks pretty wild. It's about almost a foot and a half long, just a few centimeters wide for most of the barrel. And the specs, it's full frame, fully manual, 24 millimeter macro lens, F14 to F40. F14 to F40. What? Yeah, no, that's weird. Let's break this down. So first of all, the fact that it covers full frame is pretty amazing. Uh, it's a fully manual lens, which means the aperture ring and the focus ring are both declicked and fully hand operated instead of electronic. There also happens to be seven aperture blades, by the way, and 27 different optical elements in the whole tube. And it's a macro lens, meaning the minimum focus distance is really close, one and a half feet. But when you measure a minimum focus distance from the flange or from the sensor, basically, that one and a half feet puts it just inches away from the end of the barrel of the lens, which is also pretty crazy. And then the 24 millimeters is also odd. Most macro lenses are around 100 millimeters in focal length, which is great. That gets you really close to the subject, but also really isolates it with the super shallow depth of field. A 24 millimeter macro, it still lets you get super close, but it keeps this wide angle field of view and more is in focus. And then the F14 to F40 is kind of a blessing and a curse. On one hand, if you could go all the way wide open to F2.8 or F4 or something, you'd probably get almost nothing in focus. So it kind of saves you from that. But on the other hand, at F14 wide open, it means you need a lot of light for this lens, like a lot of light. And then keeping up with the probe theme, the front end of this lens is actually waterproof. So you can not only probe you know, small spaces, but you can submerge it, even get underwater shots if you want to. And then you can see up front, there's actually this ring of, that is right, LEDs, because this lens has lights built in to the lens. It's a lot, so if you're shooting in a very small space or a dark space, you can use the light to illuminate your subject. There's literally a micro USB port on the barrel of this lens that plugs into it, and it comes with a micro USB cable in the box. So if you attach it to some sort of power brick like I did, and then plug it in and turn it on, you end up with this uh, sort of a magic wand of an experience. It's pretty bright too. That's all the LEDs lit up at once, a ring light at the end of your probe lens. It's crazy. But of course, when it all comes down to it, of course, the shape of this lens is what makes it such a unique tool. Obviously being so narrow, you can get right up like super close to things. You can be in small spaces. And then of course you're sort of 
really close to something while being far away from it at the same time. And there's also a bunch of YouTube videos detailing a bunch of examples of this. Even that viral video depicting kind of shooting it, the shooting part is fake. There, there's nothing detaching from the lens here. That's definitely edited. But the shots it got that they included, those shots are actually real and they're super well done. And there's so many other good ones. So that of course got the gears turning about how to possibly use the probe lens for a tech video or a shot in a tech video or just to shoot tech in some way. And then of course we saw Phil's video with the Galaxy Fold. So the story goes, as you know, I got the OnePlus 7 Pro a couple weeks beforehand and had this lens in hand the entire time. So uh, I knew I had to try something. So of course, to maximize how dramatic it is, you wanna get as close to the phone as possible. And like I said, even at F14 wide open, you need a ton of light to get, even see anything usable. Even in broad daylight or super strong studio lights, you gotta crank the ISO at F14. The thing is, phone screens are actually really not that bright. And if you shine lights at them, they get less bright. So it turns out that's actually why The Verge's video was shot in this dark setting with a dark background, because it's the only way to really see the phone's display with this lens. So that's why I ended up having to do basically the same thing for the OnePlus 7 Pro. Phone screens just aren't bright enough to compete against other lights. So the only way to really see it vividly is to turn the rest of the lights off kind of like how your phone screen looks the brightest at night. But we had some other practicals and some other lights in the scene. And then even after we set everything up with a shot like this, the work isn't done until a little bit of coloring, a little bit of editing to brighten up the phone, denoising, effects adding, and potentially even sound design, etc. But the final shot is so worth it. So really, as it's turning out, the best way to maximize this lens when shooting objects with it is number one, to get really, really close to your subject, usually a small subject. And then, you know, play with movement a bit and specifically things around the barrel to really get that perspective that it creates of being like a tiny person on like a small surface with things going past you. So that's what we tried to do. So here are some other examples of some shots we've done with the probe lens. <laughs> So this was a fun one. Yes, in the studio we do have CD racks that have never held a CD in their life. Instead, they hold the smartphones. Don't worry, it's perfect. So I was literally just wondering what it would look like to move through the phones as if you were like a bug flying through them. So the red is on a slider. We pointed lights at it, like lots of lights. And there's almost no other point to this shot other than really just seeing how cool it would look from that crazy inside perspective. We did a couple different versions, you know, pull versus push moves. But other than that, there's no subject in the middle. We literally just got the shot to see if you could get it, and you couldn't with any other traditional lens. Even a GoPro wouldn't fit in the opening this lens is fitting through. All right, so this one's just fun, and I think a lot of that's just because it's really colorful and I was hungry, but I think it would be even more awesome with maybe the robot or with possibly a true slow motion camera like a Phantom or something crazy. But the setup is similar. It's got a lot of light and then just timing the M&Ms falling over and spilling basically over the lens. And that was the challenge is to time it right. So this was shot in slow motion. The red does handle 120 FPS at 4K. So that was not a problem. Um, but we had plenty of other versions and other bloopers with this shot with the M&M spilling everywhere and weird timing because it's human error. You know, you're not gonna get it perfect every time. But the final version, it couldn't have worked out any better with the M&Ms bouncing pretty much right over the lens, just like a transition. All right, shout out to Andy. So this one, actually is inspired by that viral video where it looks like it goes through this brush with all the bristles. Um, this one, just fake plants. So for this one, I was thinking we were gonna use the light on the front of the lens for this one, but after a few test shots, it turned out to definitely still be too harsh, like a spotlight. So we turned that off and basically doubled down on lighting the environment a lot better. So there's still a ton of light here. And the original shot was actually pulling the move on the slider backwards so the fake grass would sort of naturally move over to cover up the lens as it goes past. So the final shot you see is just playing it back reversed. 
and then the lighting on the Android at the end as it dims out, that was just timed by hand, just by moving the light I was holding. 100% practical effects, 100% pro blends. So this was a, a horizontal slide, of course, as you could tell. Similar lighting setup to the last one, but just moving the lights higher up so they didn't glare off this matte black keyboard so much. And then you can actually see the RGB lights better. I'm actually honestly surprised these showed up on video so well. And then just getting super close to the keyboard, kind of like you really couldn't with any other lens. So that was a fun one. The perspective we imagined when we were dreaming up this shot is like the zipper sort of opening past you, like you're this tiny, like a bug again, and this giant zipper is sort of chasing you away. The tough part is obviously since the depth of field is so shallow, it's super easy to go in or out of focus if the timing, which is by hand, isn't absolutely perfect. So there's plenty of takes of that where my hand goes in and out of focus, so I didn't worry about that too much. Instead, the more interesting part is making it feel like the zipper is closing around you and being so low to the ground, like only the probe lens can, definitely helped with that. So this is the last, and I'll say the most difficult one, just because it's entirely handheld and free flowing, and it is not a lightweight camera. But the perspective is basically as if you're, you know, attached to the marker, like you're a bug holding onto the marker for dear life as I write something. And uh, it kind of turned out pretty well. And you could probably do this with another 24 millimeter lens if the minimum focus distance was close enough, but you know, that was fun to shoot anyway. But yeah, that is the probe lens. It's, it's clearly not a conventional lens. And there's almost no reason to actually go get one. You, you kind of have to invent ways to use it. But those couple times where you do actually find a good use for it and it turns out to work really well, it's so worth it. So that, that's what makes this dope tech. So of course, now that you've seen it on video, you'll be the first to recognize it when you see a shot occasionally from it in a future video, kind of like the robot shots you guys recognize. I promise not to overuse it, but I'm super glad we have it. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.